soul, for I am faithful. Save the servant who trusts in you, my God. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I cry to you all the day long. Glad in the soul of your servant, for I lift up my soul to you, O Lord. Have mercy on me. to my voice in supplication. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Good morning, and happy new month to you. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. So prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. Let us call to mind our sins and ask God for mercy and pardon. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, and what I've done, and what I failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us life everlasting. Amen.
Let us pray. The Mass is being offered for Reverend Donald P. Clifford, and we pray for the intention in a special way. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Now Israel, hear the statutes and decrees which I am teaching you to observe, that you may live and may enter in and take possession of the land which the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. In your observance of the commandments of the Lord your God, which I enjoin upon you, you shall not add to what I command you, nor subtract from it. Observe them carefully, for thus will you give evidence of your wisdom and intelligence to the nations, who will hear of all these statutes and say, This great nation is truly a wise and intelligent people. For what great nation is there that has God so close to it as the Lord, our God, is to us whenever we call upon him? Or what great nation has statutes and decrees that are as just as this whole law which I am settling before you today? The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. James. Dearest brothers and sisters, all good giving and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no alteration or shadow caused by change. He wills to give us birth by the word of truth, that we may be a kind of fruit, first fruits of his cre creatures. Humbly welcome the word that has been planted in you and is able to save your souls. Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deluding yourselves. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their affliction, and to keep oneself unstained by the word. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When the Pharisees with some scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they observed that some of his disciples ate their meals with unclean, that is, unwashed hands. For the Pharisees, and in fact all Jews, do not eat without carefully washing their hands keeping the tradition of the elders. And on coming from the marketplace, they do not eat without purifying themselves. And there are many other things that they have traditionally observed. The purification of cups and jugs and kettles and beds. So the Pharisees and scribes questioned him, why do your disciples not follow the tradition of the elders, but instead eat a meal with unclean hands? He responded, well did Isaiah prophesy about you hypocrites, as it is written, these people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching us doctrines, human precepts. You disregard God's commandment, but cling to human tradition. He summoned the, the crowd again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. Nothing that enters one from outside can defile that person. 
But the things that come out from within are what defile. From within people, from their hearts, come evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, folly. All these evils come from within and they defile. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning once more. Those who did not get a chance to look at the bulletin may be wondering who is this one presiding? Let me begin by introducing myself. I am Paulinus Mwaike, a priest of Abakaliki Diocese, Nigeria, ordained 2012. After my ordination, I served in my diocese as a pastor and educator for eight years before moving over to Boston College for a graduate study in theology. With the permission of my home bishop and Cardinal Sean O'Malley, I am here to share with you how much the Catholic Church in my diocese has benefited and could benefit from your general support towards propagating the faith on how we have benefited. I would like to share a few facts about my diocese. It was created in 1973, about 51 years ago. So your church is older than my diocese. And it was created to serve the spiritual needs of people in an estimated land area of about 2,136 square miles. At its inception, it has only 64 priests, 15 nuns, and 21 seminarians. But today, the population of priests and nuns in the diocese is over 500, and these care for the needs of about a million Catholics. It is all thanks to the goodwill of men and women all over the world that our diocese has recorded this growth. The Society of St. Peter the Apostle, founded by two lay faithful, Stephanie Bigard and her daughter Jean was especially helpful in keeping our seminaries open and in nourishing the vocation of indigent people called to God's service. I am one of those indigent persons and I am grateful to all whose generosity helped me find my vocation to the priesthood. Judging by my family, I couldn't have been a priest. Although 
my diocese has thus grown, it is still largely a mission diocese. Its population is still grappling with hunger, avoidable sicknesses and death, lack of education, and spiritual blindness that leads to all sorts of faith crises. These conditions are being worsened by the increasing insecurity and economic instability in Nigeria. Readers of the newspaper, especially the New York Times, we know what I am saying in terms of the situation in Nigeria. For instance, between last year and this year, two priests and eight nuns were kidnapped in my own diocese. And about four Christian communities were sacked due to intercommunal wars and attacks from Islamic fundamentalists. These displaced persons are scattered in different internally displaced camps, and our diocese has committed itself to bringing them temporal and spiritual relief. But we need resources to do this. We need especially to train priests, religious, and lay faithful who can help to carry out this mission. As the scripture says, the harvest is rich, but the laborers are few. We have 500 priests and nuns, but the work is just overwhelming for them. As a pastor, I was alone in a parish, and I had over 2,000 to 3,000 regularly attending faithful, to, uh, faithful who attended regularly to care for. I am hoping that through your generous support today, the church in Abaklik Diocese will remain alive to its mission. Yes, it will help in training more seminarians and in bringing retirement home, or in building retirement home for our retired priests who have worked very hard but have no government policy to fall back on. Just to give an example, every year, about 300 young people apply to the seminary in our diocese, but no fewer or no more than 20 of them get selected because of the poor financial situation of the diocese. I want to suggest two motivations as you think of how to respond to my plea. The first arises from our baptismal obligation to be missionaries to the world. To carry out this mission, you can give by going, or you go by giving. The founder of the Society for the Propagation of Faith, Pauline Marie Jaricot, a French, that's exactly what she did. She went by giving. The second motivation derives from today's readings, which dwell on obeying God's laws. As Jesus clarified in his response to the scribes and Pharisees, the essence of this law is not in regulations, but in the relationship the law fosters among the people and between them and their God. Love for God and for one another summarizes this relationship. Matthew chapter 25 verse 40 says, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and, and sisters of mine, you did for me. 
it captures the essence of the law and not some kind of doctrine, regulation, some kind of legalistic approach to law. We encourage then, brothers and sisters, to build a strong relationship with God that frees us to act out of love and not to engage in criticism and judgment like the Pharisees and the scribes of today's gospel. God bless you, brethren, as you leverage on these motivations for your work of charity and for your own living in faith. Thank you. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things we are made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayer of the faithful. We make our petitions in faith. For the Pope's monthly intention that each one of us will hear and take to heart the cry of the earth and of the victims of natural disasters and climatic change, and that all will undertake to personally care for the world in which we live. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Cardinal Sean, our Archbishop, who will soon be retiring, and for his replacement, Bishop-elect Henning, that his transition will be smooth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our political leaders, that they heed the calling of God to build a culture of life, beginning with natural conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us who hunger for meaning and purpose in our daily lives, that our needs will be satisfied by turning to Jesus, the living bread. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the soldiers on active duty and the first responders, that they persevere in faith with courage, 
hope and strength nourished by Jesus, the living bread. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those being held hostage, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick and in distress in any way, especially those listed in the bulletin, that they be strengthened by the hope of the Lord's resurrection. We pray to the Lord. For world peace, especially conflicts in the Middle East and in Russia, Ukraine. We pray to the Lord. For our beloved who have gone before us, may they find a new home in the mystery of Christ's passion, death, and resurrection. We pray to the Lord. We remember in a special way Reverend Donald P. Clifford, for whom this Mass is being celebrated. We pray to the Lord. Hearts, we make our other petitions. For these intentions we bear in our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, hear our prayers, for we are prayed through Christ our Lord. Amen. Sorry, Annie. An announcement we failed to make before Mass is that there will be a second collection for Mission Sunday. Seek 
my life. Look down, O oh Lord, to help me. sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of his holy church. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, 
he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the hope of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and glory yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Stay, quit 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Tropeni 
tens. Lagasikut Thomas non intueor Deum tamen meum te confiteor Hoc me tibi semper magis credere in te spema Vivus vitam prestans omini, presta me menti de te vivere, et te ili semper tu ce sapere. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to save you in our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Before the final blessing, I wish to say a very big thank you to all of you. Uh, it is a pleasure to be in your midst, and I do not take that for granted. I'm especially grateful to Father Sean, who permitted us to come in, and who has supported me since yesterday. Thank you, the choir. You are wonderful. Thank you, our volunteers, for the great work you do. Thank you, our reader, lector, and Eucharistic Minister as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, Liz. You are the best. And Jennifer, I can really appreciate you know, how good you are. Thank you so much for the great mission you, know, you are carrying out. Father Vincent here, we were together in Boston College School of Theology and Ministry, and we took a couple of courses together. So I think I knew him before you guys. So thank you, Father Vincent. Uh, your presence here is very encouraging. You can see how he has been guiding me uh, for me to do the right thing. I appreciate that. And I appreciate you as a wonderful colleague and as one of the you know, share us in Christ's priesthood. Thank you for all you do. I hope you enjoy the rest of your uh, weekend and the Labor Day. Please enjoy the holiday and be happy, be, uh, how do I say, cool or warm? I don't know which one. So whatever it is, just be fine and God bless you. <laughs> the Lord be with you. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace and announce the gospel. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. A recessional hymn, 210. Holy God, we praise thy name, 210. We'll be singing verses 1, 2, and 4.
Jesus. Amen.